It's called If You Say You Do. Tree wooden bow booth here. We're going to talk to Clark. Hi, Clark. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well. This is quite some magnificent work you do here. These are all bows that you handcraft yourself. That's right. What about the leather binding and all the decoration? Is that yours too? Everything you see here is mine, yeah. What kind of wood are you using? Um, pretty much every bow here is U wood. U wood? Pacific. Pacific U. Pacific U. And most of it's harvested right here in the Kootenays. Absolutely gorgeous. So how long have you been doing this? It's about 25 years now. Yeah, I can tell. It's real high quality work. Tell us a little bit about what's involved in actually collecting the wood and preparing it. Well, you got to go, uh, first you got to know the mountains, so you can't be scared to hike and you can't be scared to trek. So you have to know where to locate it, right? And you can't be scared to carry things. There's a lot of this wood I pack out on my shoulders, like sometimes over a kilometer. Wow. Yeah. So how do you prepare it to bring it to the bow stage? Um, well, you know, you take the raw tree, you split the, split the tree out just like you would split a fence post. And then you uh, you take it to a different size. I got, I got a few different pieces here, but you keep rendering the wood down. And most of the wood is seasoned at least up to seven to ten years before I'll before I'll start making a bow to bend. Seven to ten years? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Wow. Beautiful. So uh, how much do you charge for these bows? Well, they'll vary. they vary depending on the piece of wood that I start with and depending on you know the, the demands from the customer. I see. But they, you know, they range anywhere from you know, I'll make a, uh, a quick bow for a couple hundred bucks up to $2,000. So people will, act, will actually approach you and ask you to build them a custom bow, will they? Actually, I have bows all over the world. Oh, yeah. do you? Yeah. Well, this is great. You know, I'm, I'm glad you shared this information with me. So if people want to know more about you, do you have a website? I do. Well, what's your website address? It's just called uh, the... Let me have a look first. Okay. <laughs> It's thewoodenbow.com. Thewoodenbow.com. T H E W O O D E N B O W.com. That's right. Fantastic. Well, thanks a lot, Clark. All right. I hope you do well today. Thanks. Take care.
Hey, how's it going? We're going to drop in and talk to Jen at Aurora and Amour. Hi, Jen. Hi. How are you today? I'm great. So, I'm looking at your booth here. What is it that you're offering? I make a variety of all-natural body products, balms, salves, uh, body butters, face creams, face serums, all sorts of nice oils. And you make them all yourself? Yes, I do. Natural ingredients? All natural ingredients, yep. So tell us a bit more detail about some of your products here. Uh, I've got some really nice products for the summer. There's an owie butter that's used on bug bites, on cuts and scrapes and all sorts of owies. So it's kind of like a salve? It, yeah, it's a type of salve. Yeah. Type of salve. Yeah, it's great. Um, there's also another salve, a calendula salve, that's great on skin irritations like eczema, any kind of redness or other irritations. A uh, really nice face serum that's quite popular with people, very moisturizing, especially in this dryness. It's quite popular. Uh, I've got a number of different oils, body oils, uh, invigorating scent, grounded, earthy scent, relaxing scent. But you know, a lot of people are quite often concerned about the extra ingredients that people put in there to keep it together and all that stuff. So what do you use? I use an all-natural vegetable-based um, emollient. Oh, great. So that helps to bind any kind of oil and water products. So for a lot of people, you would say this stuff is hyperallergenic for most people, right? For most people it is, and it's a really great alternative for anyone with sensitive skin. Uh, I do use preservatives, but they're all natural preservatives like citric acid. I use silver nitrate in one of the products. Oh, great. It's antibacterial. And I try and find uh, anything that I can source locally as well in terms of the herbs that are used. And okay, you don't have a website yet, do you? Not yet, it's up and coming. How about a Facebook page? It's coming too. Okay. Yeah, but you can find me at the markets and uh, email, phone, old-fashioned way for now. Okay, well thanks a lot. Thank you. I like your booth and I wish you the best in it. Bye bye. He look in the eyes for the first time tonight She melts me like whiskey on ice Says I you one of the good guys or one of a kind Tonight I look in the eyes For there'll be sorrow tomorrow Just like there was today Hello, Veronique. Hello. Comment ça va? Ça va très bien. Good. I see you're getting a grip. Fort very lucky man. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to talk with Jesse Woodward. He's the markets director for all three events that the Eco Society puts on. Hey, Jesse. Hello. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. Great. So tell us about the three major events that happen that are sponsored by the West uh, by the West Kootenai Eco Society. Um, we run the uh, downtown market, which you're at right here, on Wednesdays 
from uh, 10 to 4. And then we have the Cottonwood Market on Saturdays down at Cottonwood Falls Park, and that runs from 9.30 to 3. And then um, three times a year, June, July, at the last Friday of June, July, and August, we have Market Fest, which is a big street party. Yeah, I was listening to an interview on the radio this afternoon, actually, and they said that last, last, uh, the last one in June, approximately 2,000 people attended that. That was my guesstimation. I mean, I'm not, you know, right. exact, but that was my guesstimation. Over the whole evening, it was probably about 2,000 people showed up there. Well, you guys are doing a wonderful job. It's nice, you know, I used to work for Street Fest years ago. Yes. And nothing since Street Fest has been compared to it. You guys have done a really good job. Yes. Not only of promoting the community and the artisans, but of bringing people into Nelson at the same time. I think, I think generally, you know, what we're trying to do is get an in-between where we're capturing the local market. Uh, to come down and support local, but we're also, you know, it's giving something for tourists to do when they come here, uh, and especially if they can capture those last three uh, Fridays are a lot of fun for tourists. And it appears that the city of Nelson and the downtown businesses are very supportive of the idea. Yeah, it was a bit of a struggle and we had to work with that, but there has been, I think, a, an understanding by the city that um, a market right downtown is a very important part of having a local economy and supporting a local economy. I think it's also an investment in the future because people who might come to the market now who are visiting might come back to Nelson later and shop at these businesses at some other time. I, I think so. I think generally, you know, the, the research shows that uh, any town over about 10,000 should absolutely have a market in the downtown core for revitalization and support of the, of, of the downtown core. So uh, they understand that. That's been sort of proven now. And so that's what's happening here. That's why we got the agreement again. And for a lot of these artisans that sell produce and things like that, it's been a good proving ground for the 100-mile diet also. Yes, and exactly. And I think we're, you know, we're tapping into this sort of uh, small but very vivacious you know, local economy, food producers. And people can come here and they can ask the farmers, you know about the food that's grown. They can buy. They can buy directly from the grower, which is a really unusual in this day and age. So, well, you know, it's a big responsibility overseeing three these three events. You're doing a really good job. Thank you. Thanks to you and the West Coast Eco Society. Thank you. Okay, take care, Jesse. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. at the Raw Dragon Chocolate booth here and meet the two people running it. Hello there. Hello. Well, what are your names? Dragon. And I'm Danu. And what? Danu. Dra or Dragon and Danu? That's right. Wow. It's a lovely booth. So tell us about what's going on here. Thank you very much. We make raw, organic, honey-sweetened chocolate. All of our ingredients are raw, which means we don't process them above uh, body temperature, oh. maintaining all of the heat-sensitive nutrients and um, antioxidants, antioxidants the all the vitamin C, all the um, vitamins, iron, magnesium, zinc, phosphorus, <laughs> and uh, the other chemicals that cacao beans are the highest singular plant source in nature. Uh, Sounds so, like it has a lot of minerals in it, eh? Definitely, right. definitely. The cacao bean is actually kind of like nature's multivitamin. <laughs> it's so rich in vitamins and min minerals and neurochemicals and antioxidants. It is. Uh, it, in it induces a bit of a euphoric experience and thus is related to a heart food experience and not, not so much junk food. What we're trying to do with Raw Dragon is um, transform this idea that chocolate is a junk food back into the heart food that it has always been meant to be. In ancient times it was revered as a uh, as a heart food or heart medicine, you know, it was used in ceremonies, it was used as currency, it was really a sacred thing. And it's been kind of 
forgotten, so to speak, in the Western culture where it's been mixed with milk and sugar and, and really cooked, cooked all the medicine out of it. So we're, we're not cooking it, we're, putting, we're leaving the medicine in and we're sharing that. So it becomes a heart food experience. We blend our chocolate with only honey. We're stone grinding the cacao nibs ourselves into the paste and blend it with only unpasteurized honey from Vancouver Island and a bit of ground goji berries to up those antioxidants. Yeah. And blend it into a smooth, creamy and delicious chocolate bar. So we basically you've got the pure product before it gets poisoned. That's exactly yeah. right. And, you, and, you and then we mix it with honey right. so that there's not that like toxification with the sugar. You actually get a, syn a synergy, a synergistic uh, union between the honey and the cacao, which have been used for thousands of years, they actually amplify each other and they taste great. So it's just really a wonderful product. So this is really sweet in a good way. In a, exactly right. <laughs> okay, do you guys have a website or? We do. Rawdragonchocolate.com. Rawdragonchocolate.com. That's right. Yeah, we're, we're Facebook and Nelson. Twitter as well. Okay, yeah. well, I hope you guys do well today. I wish you the very best. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks Thank a lot. Okay, now we're going to meet James at the 8th Rebel Screen Printing booth. Hi James! Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. So tell us about your product here, what's going on, what do you do? Well, I've got a lot of eco-friendly products, a lot of um, organic cotton and bamboo. I'm a screen printer, so I, I uh, search out cool designs and uh, screen print. So you do all the screen printing yourself? Yeah, I'm the printer. And these are your original designs? They, well, not all original. Some came off the uh, internet and some I just find. So you get inspired by other designs? Yeah, I'm inspired and come up with uh, unique and different designs. Looks great. Summer oh. fashions. Red feather's been popular this summer. Nice. Okay, well thanks for the little tour. Thank you. I hope you do well tonight. So too. Take care.